Hello, I'm Sally Douglas. This is Debbie Weiss. We are here at the Withlacoochee Golf Preserve, and right now we're in front of the Ellie Schiller Education Center, and this is where we're going to start our tour. The Withlacoochee Golf Preserve is a 413-acre preserve that was purchased by the town of Yankeetown uh, with a grant from the Florida Communities Trust. Uh, it's just the most magnificent place I've ever seen, and we're going to take you on a little tour. Great, let's get started. Okay, where do you want to start? At the tower? Yes. Okay, this way please, let's go. Here we are at the top of our 30-foot observation tower. Just look at this magnificent view. You can tell this is an estuary, the, the area where the land, the river, meet the ocean, the, well, the gulf actually over here. The way the channels snake in with many curves is evidence that this is a low energy tidal area. Not much wave action and certainly not as much wind as there would be on the Atlantic side of Florida. Different times of the day when you come up here it's going to look different because it is an estuary. The tide comes in and the channels fill up and the tide goes out and we'll see mud flats. Let's walk down and take a closer look at what happens in the marsh. We're standing here on a lime rock causeway. This was built years ago to connect the house to this hardwood hammock that we're going to walk through. It is very fragile, so motorized vehicles are not allowed. We see here some of the most productive areas of the uh, estuary, the salt marsh. Salt marshes are coastal wetlands rich in marine life. Salt marshes occur in the area of low tidal action since the plants that live here could not grow in strong tide. The water here is brackish, which means it is a mix of salt and fresh water. Salt marshes have a variety of rushes, sedges, and grasses. Let's look and see what we have here. We see a meadow of black needle rush. Black needle rush is common to Florida's coastal marshes. Needle rush has a cylindrical stem about a quarter of an inch in diameter. The stems taper to points, hence the needle. See how sharp this one is? Black needle rush and other grasses here filter the water that comes into this estuary. The roots of these plants trap nutrients also and provide food for many species of young fish such as pinfish, sheep's head, red drum, and sea trout. This area is also very important to the life cycle of the shrimp. Shrimp eggs are released way out in the gulf. At this point they're almost invisible and have no swimming appendages. The eggs develop into larvae that are carried by currents into the brackish water in the estuary. Over a four to six week period, the shrimp grow and develop swimming and walking legs. They feed on detritus. One of their favorites is detritus from parstina grass that grows in the estuary. The shrimp grow bigger here, eating detritus and phytoplankton and also being eaten themselves by various juvenile fish. Shrimp begin to move back into the gulf when they're sub-adult and when there is a temperature change. They first go to the barrier islands, then out into the gulf. Without the estuary, there'd be no shrimp. No shrimp cocktail? No shrimp and grits. No shrimp scampi? Oh, let's move on. We're going to stop here and take a look at a species of crustacean that are very important to the marsh, and it's the fiddler crab. You can see troops of fiddler crabs running through at, at, at low tide times any time. Fiddler crabs dig holes about a foot deep in the sand and they use these holes to retreat when, they, when they're scared or when the water's coming in. The opening is plugged with sand or mud to keep out the water. Fiddlers eat algae and decompose matter. They leave behind sand pellets rolled out of their burrows. So fiddler crabs are an important part of the, uh, of the ecological environment here. They provide food for a variety of, of juvenile fish and for birds. They provide food for raccoons and they are just an integral part of this land um, that is the estuary. And where are we going next? Day? Why don't we take a look at a hardwood hammock? Let's do it. We're in another of our native communities here. This is the hardwood hammock uh, that has uh, live oak and palmetto. That's we call this the magical forest because it's well, magical. It's a hardwood hammock because it's higher than the rest of the area and that's why we have the live oak and the palmetto plants. 
Other typical plants include wax myrtle, water oak, pigeon plum, poison ivy, orchids, lid flowers, and kunti. Let's head down to the dock now. Here we are at the fishing pier of the Withlacoochee Gulf Preserve. You can launch a kayak here on Heverson Creek and go all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico. Here we find another habitat. It's called the mud flats. Though at low tide these flats look barren, they are an important part of marine and estuary systems. These flats are composed in large by dead plants and other organic materials. It is called detritus. These flats support many different types of organisms. Snails, crustaceans, and other invertebrates all use this as a dinner plate. At low tide you can see plenty of blue crabs here filling up. Since these flats experience a wide range of salinities, the organisms that live here must adapt as well. The mud is very low in oxygen. Some of the organisms that live here oxygenate their burrows. We hope you enjoyed this tour of the Withlacoochee Gulf Preserve. Looking forward to seeing you here soon. Without the estuary, there would be no shrimp. No shrimp cocktail? No shrimp and grits. No shrimp scampi? Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the line. The line was, was let's move on. Do you want to do one more time? <laughs> Here, let's try one more time. So you say the remaining. Ouch.